Do Alaska Native corporations help their shareholders climb the economic ladder? After three decades on the Sea Alaska Corporation's board of directors, Rosita Whirl recently retired. I can't believe I was on there for 30 years because it went by just that fast. In 1971, President Nixon signed the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, or ANCSA, into law. Sea Alaska is one of 12 for-profit regional Alaska Native corporations the legislation created. It also created many other village corporations. Alaska Natives at the time, like Whirl, enrolled as shareholders. And I think most of our people, our shareholders, believe that Sea Alaska is not just a business corporation, although some people tend to think that that's its sole responsibility. Sasha Ivan Sobolev is an original shareholder in the Cake Village Corporation and the Regional Sea Alaska Corporation. I asked him if he felt like Native corporations generally can help people with economic mobility. No. Why do you say that? Because the business nature of Angstka Corps, which is the formation of an economic vehicle called a profit-making business is not the way the culture of southeastern Alaska natives or even natives anywhere in the United States thinks or exists. I barely even recognize except a couple of times a year when they give out one or two hundred dollars but it, it doesn't set the standard for um, making a culture come alive. It doesn't recognize where you live, the lands that you are, that your clans and your, your families have had for years, that where you pick berries or where you go fishing or where you dry the foods that are, that are going to be due or whether you're going to have seaweed come. It doesn't do any of that. However, some Native corporations do support nonprofits focused on culture. For example, Rosita Whirl is the president of the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. In addition to our um, uh, economic responsibilities uh, through employment and dividends. We also have a host of other uh, responsibilities and uh, things to meet our mission objectives like um, scholarships, uh, internships, things to grow, help our grow uh, our, our shareholders so that they could leave, lead a, a, a healthy lifestyle. Worrell says she'd like to see Sea Alaska advocate for more subsistence rights for its shareholders. Subsistence is really important to us economically, but it also has other dimensions that support our cultural beliefs, our, 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 our idea of caring and sharing resources with one another. So I, I'm not saying that we have to, you know, go back to uh, hunting and fishing economies, but I want to see us move forward. And I think Sea Alaska is critical to this moving forward in a way that brings us into the 21st centuries, but also uh, allows us to sustain our traditional cultures. Rosita Whirl and Sasha Sobleff are just two voices among tens of thousands of shareholders in more than 200 Alaska Native corporations. Do you have a story about how your corporations affected your family? Share it at ktoo.org slash chasing the dream. Funding for Chasing the Dream is provided by the JPB Foundation and Ford Foundation. Support for Chasing the Dream on KTOO comes from Thread, advancing the quality of early care and education in Alaska.